You're now tuned into Sykes Weekly Nerf Dosage. Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome to episode 132 of Pwned. This episode is about an old school mod where you could consider it an old school mod. I've done this a couple of times before, but not such a straight direct mod. And that is known as the Doomsayer mod, which is based off an old blaster that is uh, probably no longer in production, known as the ERTL Rapid Fire Shotgun. And this is what a Doomsayer traditionally looks like with no actual modifications to the shell. This is what it looks like with a one foot long barrel per turret slot. So yeah, this is traditionally how the mod was made. In the past, I actually did one which was about I think six inches or eight inches long, but this is one foot because it goes from here all the way to here. Now one of the reasons why I did this mod is because Zinf actually requested for me to do this. Uh, he provided me with the blaster itself and the materials, especially with the internal upgrade parts. Now this is something new to me, so I was very, very interested to find out what it was like and what it was all about. It's actually aluminium internals like the trigger as you guys can see is already made of aluminium same thing for the plunger rod so i thought that was really really cool i've never seen it before so i went ahead and i agreed to do this mod and the second reason which is the main reason is because i feel that a lot of you guys my viewers i actually introduced to nerf during the period of time when the elite blasters were introduced into the market so a lot of you don't actually know about the older war primaries or the older blasters that we used to rock with back in the day now this was one of the main high level or really sought after mod besides things like the pass or the pas the quad shot mod we used to have long shots that were brass breech but not as advanced and as simple yet very effective as what we have nowadays and this was one of the more difficult blasters to actually mod but then again it's also one of the best that you could get for crazy performance now what i'm doing in this episode is not a tutorial on how to convert your rapid fire shotgun into a doomsayer partly because i think it's actually pretty difficult to procure yourself one of these brand new and nowadays less and less people are actually using petg a lot of people are using brass but this is one of the old school mods and uh, when you guys look at the internals you realize why the sheer air volume and this turret when I mean, you have to take note of different you know techniques as instead of nowadays what you have like for example drop-in kits drop-in kits can be considered like modding but you're not actually really creating something new but this is like you know when you do things like rebarreling and you cut reloading slots and stuff like that this is what we old school modders always do in the past to upgrade our blasters so this was really one heck of a journey i remember my very first time making a doomsayer mod when i finally got it down i was so satisfied with myself then i went ahead and i did one uh, which was actually featured back in the days when there was nerf mods review so uh, i was really proud of that one and then this time i have this baby over here which i didn't do a stock replacement so this is what the shell originally looked like so as i was saying it isn't really a tutorial it's more like a talk through i'll be giving you explanations of different things that i did the thing here is i don't want to scare you guys away from modding please go ahead and learn about it because this knowledge is really very useful in applications to the current level of modding as well because i personally believe that these were the foundation building blocks of modding nerf blasters all right so check it out here we are with the internals of the Doomsayer and you guys who are experienced with Doomsayers, you actually can tell I didn't really do much shell work. You know, this is all stock, you know, that is all stock. We got the stock plunger tube, so I'm going to start from the back because the most amount of work that was done was all in the turret. So let's check out the trigger area. As you can see, there's a very beautiful aluminum trigger, all right, and the spring here has been upgraded with a clothes pack spring but i needed to find a support so i just hot glued yes it's very strange but it's brown hot glue i hot glued a stub of brass i think this is 17 30 seconds brass i don't know just something lying around to act as a wall now the problem is that when you close up the shell the other half of the shell is going to press down on this spring over here the leg of the spring and it's going to get into the way of the original safety switch so basically this renders the switch completely useless so uh, we'll just leave it in the open position i'm pretty sure that we can actually find a way to modify that but uh, i'm not willing to go ahead with a lot of trial and error but yeah uh, this will have to be open and i have to snip off a part of that spring over here because you know the leg original length is about this length moving on to the plunger tube because i didn't do anything to the rotating arm as well as the original priming bar so plunger tube out uh, i should say plunger rod first and you guys can see it's a brand new plunger rod altogether. We've got a gasket for the seal 
It's like a skirt seal but we're using a rubber gasket. Then we have a washer on the front and a washer on the back. That is a washer over there. Now this is an upgrade spring. I don't know where this spring came from but it's a beefier spring than the sock spring. And this rubber piece over here is actually salvaged from the original rubber stopper of the original plunger rod and it would sit here actually. But in order for me to take it out, I just cut a slit along the line over here and then I just uh, slip it on. That's because the original plunger rod actually had the head sealed into place and I didn't want to break it off just in case if the owner decides to swap this out with the original plunger rod instead. So yeah, but you can see that it's very, very beautifully milled. Uh, I don't even know how this is adhered in, but it looks like it's, I guess it's glued in. I don't know. I, I can't tell if there's any screws holding it in place or if it's a screw in because I, I didn't try it out, but, but you guys can have a look. All right, so this goes into the plunger tube itself and I'm going to remove the plunger tube so I can show you guys what else I did with it. So it sits like that. Plunger tube wise, uh, I didn't widen the front. All I did was I added a bit of craft foam. I actually have a light over here, but I guess I'm running low on battery. So that's that's kind of my fault. If I turn this off, we might be able to see a little bit better. Yeah, so um, yeah, okay, so that helps a little bit. Basically, what I did was I actually put a lip of goop around the front of the plunger tube and then I had this piece of craft foam and I pressed it down and left it overnight in this position like that. So that's what I did. I cut this hole by using this piece of brass over here. Now moving on to the main part which is the turret. I'm going to turn on this light again. Here we go. So turret out. As you guys can see, return springs are all in place so that's not going to be a problem. Take this guy out. Turret work is very standard. You guys can see the second layer on the inside. For those of you who are inexperienced with the Doomsayer turret or the Rapid Fire Shotgun turret, basically the turret is made out of two layers, one on the inside, one on the outside. It's this yellow part over here. On the inside, when you are actually performing your turret mod, in order for you to rebarrel it, as you guys can see, I already rebarreled with PTG, you gotta cut short this part over here. That's to reduce weight. Right, because if not, the tire is going to be extra heavy due to the long barrels in front. You have to remount slots on the back to widen this so that you can actually feed darts through. Let me just grab this out and show you guys. Feed darts through. Originally, that's not possible. And then you're going to have to find a way to attach the barrels into this whole uh, slot over here and make sure that you center them. So what I did over here was for every single barrel, I wrapped one layer of E-tape around this part. Yes, it took me quite a while to get the marking, so I had to mark it exactly at that point so I'd make sure that everything is pretty uniform. And then over here, what I did was I got some mega darts because, you know, I don't really use mega darts anymore, but I got some mega darts and then I just cut them into, I think it was half inch lengths, I believe. And then they're all in here now. So basically what the foam does is act as a centering piece. So all these here are centered with that mega dart foam and this all is centered with E-tape. And then this over here is just additional, as you guys can see, it's not holding anything in place. You actually need barrel spaces for this if you really want to maintain the straightness throughout. There are actually many options in the past to get a barrel spacer. Uh, I believe that Venom used to make some really, really awesome Doomsayer barrel spaces made out of polycarbonate. But right now, you know, with access to 3D printing technologies, we can actually just 3D print a barrel spacer. I believe that the owner of this Doomsayer will actually do that. But I did that because I thought it was cool. It's just an aesthetic thing, okay? A lot of reaming, a lot of work done to this. And then also, if you notice, there's a little nub uh, in the middle of the turret right now. So that is a pen cap or a mechanical pencil cap, the one on the back, and then a little nut. And what you have to do is basically make sure that you, you know, do some work over here. Now, this is where the, I guess, the slip or the anti-slip mechanism of the turret is. Now, I've missed out on one part initially and it caused my blaster to not work at all. I couldn't rotate the turret and I realized that that's because I needed to replace the spring with a piece of CPVC. Now the original writer by Forsaken Angel said to put hot glue around the spring but I followed Popatachi's advice instead and I went ahead and I got a stub of CPVC and I replaced the spring. So um, if you guys notice there are some screws over here so you want to just remove all those and you want to move the remove this whole thing up, up here and then you want to just get the whole of this metal rod all the way out and then you actually see that spring replace that put it back in and then the next thing is you gotta have to measure when you put it back so this part over here is actually extended out a little bit because i did some mod on that end and i had to actually remount a little slot on the shell not really not really remount but i had to extend this slot over here all the way throughout and i cut a slot at the bottom and the top just so that now the washer over here 
which originally sat on the outside of the shell is now sitting on the inside of the shell and this is to basically balance out and hold the whole turret in place because if not you have a turret that's gonna drop out right since we actually did some uh, shell mods on the front of the blaster originally there was a cap on the front that actually held the turret in place but now you got to cut all of this away leaving a very little lip so that it supports the front this part of your turret okay so uh, basically everything is friction fit you got to make sure that this part and this part align perfectly so it'll hold your turret into place so it's a lot of measuring and trial and error so let me just put this back in without uh, the plunger tube yet so I can show you guys what I mean so our uh, priming arm actually goes in all the way like so you got to find a slot and then I'm gonna make this guy sit in place so I can actually share with you guys what's going on now if you look close enough you actually see that the turret sits right up next to this lip over here and that's really really important and then going towards the back you'll see that this washer over here is sitting in between the groove now i have an extra spacer added over there and that's so that the spacer actually pushes against the back wall so spacer on the inside washer on the outside it's gripping onto this whole groove over here and that's what holds the turret in place then on top of that you have added friction once you actually have that plunger tube back in place because of the added craft foam so you have to be careful of all of these things you got to really take note of it in order for you to get a good seal with a working turret that doesn't drop out of place as well as still rotates along each prime so all the blaster systems are actually pretty simple you know it's a very straightforward priming mechanism where this arm goes back like so whenever you pump it this arm will actually be triggered by this nub over here that rotates the turret and then it gets hooked on at the back your plunger rod with that nub over there gets hooked on over here and it just catches in place like so and then when you squeeze the trigger it'll just fire if you guys look at it up close when you're actually working the blaster with each prime you'll realize that you'll see the trigger actually flick and that's because that piece over there goes to the back and pushes this down so it can get caught in place so once again very simple layout very simple concept very simple engineering but it works it works and unfortunately nowadays blasters are actually not made like this anymore the fact that you actually had them clip fed you actually need bolt sleds and stuff like that with moving breaches and you know double seals on the plunger tube and as well as the breach but this is a very very simple i would say in a sense pretty primitive style of blaster internals or springer blasters but it's a really really good really solid system and it's got a great plunger tube size as you guys can see of course it's smaller than a long shot but it's at least double the size of a retaliator nowadays and you get 12 shots and you can reload on the fly last thing i want to mention to you guys is you got to make sure that you cut out your rear loading slots and one example is what i did over here i just made sure that all these were really really wide because i didn't want to just go ahead and drill three slots just in case i wanted a big open wide slot so that you could easily reload and you could actually see four right so it really is up to you how you want to do your rear loading slots but these are actually done pretty well uh they're very smooth so it's not sharp at all you won't cut yourself because i've reamed out the edges over here and i've deburred it and uh, basically that's that welcome back now you guys already know what the internals are i'm gonna explain some uh minor details to you guys minor details because these are things that we actually take note of whenever we mod our blasters we want a very good plunger to turret seal and as i explained i use craft foam so because of that because of the extra added friction the turret rotation is going to be a little bit difficult to work with of course you're going to have to apply a bit more force but it still rotates and i'm going to just show you guys really quickly so when you initially prime it because you have to actually prime the plunger as well it's going to be quite a hefty pull make sure you do it really fast and then you will trigger the first slot to move halfway like so now you can see it's misaligned and then we're gonna jam it forward all the way in one smooth motion like that to push this guy to be aligned to the front now you see if i didn't use enough force this guy isn't going to be aligned perfectly to the center of the barrel or the or the air release slot so i'm going to try it again and this time i'm going to use a bit more force check it out so that's when everything aligns okay i'm going to show you guys again maybe i'll just shift one of these hopefully you guys understand the limitations caused because of that extra craft foam in between all right but these are the kind of things that we have to take note of last time when we used the mod and it was all turrets all right next up you need rear loading slots and the reason why you need it is because there's no way for you to front load darts all the way down a one foot long barrel all right so that's why we have rear loading slots now you just slot all these things 
on the back. And I think in recent applications, the only time when people actually made reloading slots was when I did the Cyclone Shock mod, when I converted it to Fire Streamlines, and even more recently, which is Zorko, he actually made his hammer shot a reloading hammer shot. So these are the kind of reasons why you have reloading slots, because you're not able to push that all the way to the back. Now, the reason why you want that all the way to the back is because you want to reduce as much dead space between the release of the air to where the point of the dart lies all right so less dead space more efficiency simple physics right so i'm going to give you guys a quick firing demonstration uh i think i'll just load up all 12 and then i'll fire off all 12 for your viewing pleasure take note of this guy over here now i've got a whole bunch of darts over here so whatever i pick up i'll just fire it because now in this system we can fire almost any length or any type of micro size darts okay so we have a pack d uh full length dart over here another pack d full length dart over here rebel streamline streamlines might be loose and that's because ptg is not optimal for streamline darts or at least stock nerf streamline darts but it'll still fire anyway we're just gonna go through with this for the firing demonstration original gen 1 acc nipple dart so now i've loaded four I gotta make the turret rotate. So I'm gonna prime it and start to rotate and I'll rotate in sets of four. Of course, you can also load it from here, but well, that's four. White Foam Stefan, which is an old school White Foam Stefan. Short Pack D Stefan. Artifact Stefan, which is really loose fit by the way. I've got a black silicon tip Stefan. That's another four. And now for the final four darts, a very, very old school, a little bit weirdly shaped FDL dart. These are no longer available. Another Nerf Streamline dart. New Rainbow Tip FVJ style nipple dart. I believe these are Busby darts, right? The one with the holes in the middle? I think so. So yeah, now we have all 12 darts. I can't remember exactly which dart is in which slot, so I'm just gonna fire off all 12. This time I actually have the little foam roller in the corner, so I'm just gonna be firing all 12 darts at the foam roller. Okay, so I won't hurt the wall, but uh, I hope that you guys can actually catch everything in frame. All right, so here we go. Uh, it's gonna be pretty noisy because I'm gonna use a lot of force when I, um, you know, prime the blaster and fire in between shots. Okay, so here we go. Oh, that's all 12. Okay, so all 12 darts are out. I almost primed the blaster and dry fired it, but I did not. So end of the firing demonstration, as you can see, it fired off all 12 darts with no problem whatsoever. This is the beauty of this beast over here. Yes, no pun intended, I'm sorry, but that is the beauty of this beast over here. Uh, I remember uh, this twin terror that used to, you know, run and gun with a pair of uh, doomsayers, which is Hat and Zika Cheek. These guys are just mad. They actually tweaked the hell out of their doomsayers. They actually made it like a perfect 100% seal with a very beautiful tire rotation. It's very, very difficult to attain that kind of performance. And uh, they got optimal barrel fit, great dart. So it was really performing really crazy. Now, in a situation where you're in a game, you have to understand that back then, we didn't really have things like beautifully performing brass pitches and long shots. We didn't have remedy metal kits. So people didn't really spend a lot of money buying a lot of mags running around with clips in a situation like that if you are a rushing type of player what you would do is grab that just load it on the side on the fly as you're firing off at your opponents so for every four shots you can actually start to reload on the side which is a really really interesting plus point for a blaster like this reloading slots it's almost like um where you could just say technically it's a quad shot on steroids. So this was one of the go-to blasters back then in the day, but not everyone had one because of the difficulty level of the mod itself. You would need at least some level of skill, the right materials and the guts to actually go ahead and do this because you know, you'd be cutting the shell quite a bit and most of the work's actually on the turret itself. All right. Once again, everyone, thanks so much for sticking all the way throughout and I hope that you liked this video. If you did, I hope you guys give me a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed to my channel, I hope you guys consider subscribing because I make enough videos every week. Now this, I hope, was an interesting blaster for you guys. Um, it's not very often that you get to see a Doomsayer nowadays. I'm just going to put this back because I'm a neat freak, a little bit OCD. It's not very common for you to actually see a Doomsayer nowadays, but people who have been nerfing for a little while know that these things mean business right now uh, i realized i didn't actually show you guys the seal it's not a hundred percent seal i don't really know actually because i've never really tried it out but let's go ahead and try it out yep it's not 
I don't even think that the leak is actually between the turret. Oh yeah, it is. You heard that, right? So, you guys sit here, just apply a bit more pressure and... So it's a slight leak at the plunger to turret seal and that actually is something that you would have to really tweak. You want to find the perfect balance between a good seal and a good working rotation mech. A lot of us in the past used to actually do a lot of work on the rotation arm. This time I did not because I, I have to be honest, I got a little bit lazy. But uh, it's working really great as you guys could see. It's firing off pretty hard, pretty solid. One of the best war blasters back in the day and I think it would still hold its own in today's war context. So this thing, really crazy. If you guys have questions about this, please let me know because I actually went to research. I wanted to double check and make sure that I got the mod steps right. But the problem is all the pictures are gone and the person that actually first did this mod is none other than Forsaken Angel himself. That was the problem. I couldn't find any more pictures because that image check uh, account is no longer you know, in use or no longer active. So there were no more pictures for me to reference and I just went by gut feel and a little bit by whatever I could recall. So I think I did it justice again and I think I did it right again. So like I said, if you guys have questions, just don't be afraid, ask me in the comments and if I can answer it with text, I gladly would. But I hope that this video actually gives you guys an insight to what this blaster is all about. And if you ever manage to get your hands on one of these, try. Go ahead, try it out. When it works and you get it to work, you will not regret it. All right, that's about it for this episode, guys. Thank you once again, and I will see you in the next episode. I still have more stuff that I want to share with you guys. But yes, this is one of the mods that I've been working on. See you in the next episode, guys. Jills pay the bills, and teamwork makes the dream work. Peace.